you've noted that there's been quite a few changes in the passing planets. You know, what, what changes are we seeing there? Well, all, when, when the second sun got here in, in the late uh, 2011 and, and we had the uh, CME blowbacks in 2012, that was our sun blowing material, stellar material back to the larger uh, other sun in an electrical connection. Now, when that all happened, all of the planet's axis has tipped drastically. Now, of course, NASA is not telling you this, but it was a brief, they, you know, briefly announced that all oh, the axis and such and such has tipped. But all of the planets have done that. And that's because of that larger magnet. Now, a lot of people were noticing early, early in 2011, 2010, that the sun was coming up in the northeast sky and it was really weird and the timetables were off and why are the birds singing at one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning? Well, the birds have a different point of view and they, and they are seeing the light of that second sun even before us humans did. Now, I'm amazed to this day that everybody doesn't notice how weird the sun looks currently right now. And all you have to do is just go out in the middle of the afternoon, come to almost three o'clock and look up at the sun and it is totally not right. But that is because there's planets in the way and we're looking at the dark side of these planets because they're within the Goldilocks zone between us and the sun. Now, all the planets have tipped. All the planets are heating up because this second sun. Now, at our different tipped axes, if including Earth, and you look at the jet stream right now in the northern hemisphere, and then you look at the jet stream in the southern hemisphere, which used to go opposite directions, are now going one direction. And that happened majorly as of about the turn of this year. And this is, if you look over Africa, the jet stream is flowing backwards. And if you look over Australia, the Arctic jet stream is flowing backwards. And at one point in time, about two weeks ago, it Arctic jet stream ran from Antarctica all the way up over the Mexican, uh, the Mexican Rockies and all the way over our East Coast, which is what caused that huge major storm that went off in Europe last week. And the week before. So, so we're seeing extremities in our weather because our planet is majorly tipped and our winter access point at the axis is tipped. And therefore, Australia is having the heat waves and the fires because their winter angle of light is almost direct dead on from the two major suns or if you want to, you know, the co-orbiting pair. And they're frying because they're getting direct sunlight that they don't normally because we're closest to our sun during winter. It has to do with the, the orbital uh, oval that we move on and how our axis is, axis is in comparison to the summer axis versus the winter axis, if you follow me. Shouldn't we, or can we maybe, um, be able to track the orbits of these other planets and know exactly where they're going to be at any given moment? Well, I do a monthly drawing on, on my site, and they don't, and we've learned over the last 10 years that they don't change that often. Now, what they've done is they've come down, when we first started getting sightings from, from Antarctica at Newmeyer Station was the best one with the life cams, and of course, they've limited some of that access now, too. Um, we originally watched it every day on Montana Sky Watchers One uh, uh, on their live cams, and we had you know uh, debate parties. And we first started seeing them coming up from there. And then once they broke the horizon line in North America, we started using live cams in Mexico and uh, Australia and et cetera, and started using other live cams for shots. Um, they have spiraled in front of us in our view from 2009 in four cycles of spirals. And then when they got to a certain distance from us, they went to the left and then they went to the right and then they went to the left and then they went to the right. And then they came up in our faces and then Nibiru went away from us and then the rest of the following tail planets rotated in almost like a spiraling snake in front of us over that first major pass year, which was approximately 2014, 2015. And then that's when we started seeing um, uh, Isatum and Nepesity and Attu. And then we got a first views of Attu's moon because we didn't even know Attu had even had a moon literally until 2015 when it was close enough where we could actually start take, documenting 
uh, events in the cloud patterns and the base base cloud patterns. Now, a large part of how you see these planets up in the sky is by understanding the base clouds. And I have a, a video on YouTube. It's called Understanding the Skies, Edition 1, Samuel Hoffman, I think. Um, and you can, that's look, I, I, I can give you a copy of that if you'd like. Um, and once you understand the base cloud patterns of how these ion clouds or drop off clouds on the bottoms of the, these planets, when they come within our ionosphere, I can't say our atmosphere, I'd have to say our, our ionosphere, uh, they, they have formed these repeat, repetitive patterns that over the 10 years we've all learned. And we, we see these cloud patterns in the sky up there and you know, God, there isn't another cloud in the, in the sky except for that one and boy, that one is necessity. Or hey, we know that one to be at two and, and it's, it's ion drop tail. Or hey, that big open core is Saru. Or hey, Nibiru does this fingering thing. So we've learned what the planets look like, even though you really, at some point in time, cannot see the actual planet except the dark side. We see the surrounding cloud base cloud. And then in some cases, we see their crescent. And then in other cases, we see a half full on. And in some cases, uh, as of 2007, 16 and 17, we started uh, seeing the first planetary passes where we saw the full facials, where we went, oh, we know who that is. There's a full facial of that planet. And then, of course, they each have their own colors, uh, their own land masses. Uh, uh, some have land masses, some don't. And now in Nibiru, we've got the we've got a lot of really cool uh, land mass pictures. Sarah, we don't have a lot of pictures of because Sarah was briefly here, and, we, and she was when she was here in, in 215, 216, she was a lot over the top of us. And she has this intensely thick illuminated core that is just so bright you can't see a lot of her ground. Uh, and uh, now Nepesity is green. It's got obviously some volcanic activity because it's got these puffs through its atmosphere and it's almost like spotted Dalmatian because it's got these puffs through the, the atmosphere that show some sort of volcanic activity. Um, Attu's moon is, is, is very white and it has all these pockmarks and you can't miss it. Attu has some stripes in there at an angle, but it's purple. It's definitely purple. And that's how we finally knew what the planets were and what to name them when all of these things, all of this information started matching some other information I'd gotten for, uh, in 2009 off the internet and uh, of the Pleiadian, my Pleiadian meeting slash abduction scenario where I got all this information, which we also discussed on previous shows. And they should go back and look if they want this information. 